All right, hey everyone. So this video, we're gonna talk about the basics of R Markdown. They're so simple that it shouldn't be too difficult, but uh, I wanna talk about how you get uh, this the system actually set up. Um, so I will say, I use Vim to compile R Markdown. Most people who use it use R Studio. I'll talk about both options, but uh, first let's talk about basic installation. So if you don't have R installed, you do need R. Uh, so to install that, you you know, if you're a Linux user, you know how to do it, just whatever your package manager is and install R. Uh, if you use Windows or Mac, you, you'll probably have to look at r-project.org, I think is the website. Um, but the packages you're gonna wanna install is R. And the other thing is pandoc uh, site proc. I think that's it. Um, yeah, pandoc site proc. So pandoc site proc is the thing that uh, R Markdown uses for like uh, uh, making citations, like references if you have a bibliography file. So since I'm gonna be writing papers and stuff in R Markdown, that's the kind of stuff I wanna have. So I've already installed both of these packages, but these are the ones you're gonna want if um, you know, you're know you using R Markdown. Uh, so the other stuff that you're gonna wanna install is uh, R specific packages, specifically, R Markdown, uh, because we've installed R if you run those that command, but uh, you need to install R Markdown as well. Um, so to do that, you wanna go into R, it's probably the easiest way. Um, so I like going into R as root, just because it'll install packages for every user. And also if it installs um, the default location for like user installation is like just the folder name R in your home directory, which is really ugly. It's not important, but you know, anyway. So when you're in R, you can just run the command install packages and you're gonna want R markdown. Uh, and just run that. It's already installed on my machine, but uh, that's all you're gonna need to run R markdown. Uh, the, the only other issue is how you're gonna actually run, write the documents and stuff like that. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you the more common way of compiling R Markdown, and that is using R Studio, which is a IDE that you can just look up and download. Um, I usually do not have it installed, but I decided uh, to install it just to uh, you know show, show you how it works, um, just because this is usually how people do it. Um, so uh, when you actually start the program up, let me get rid of this. So when you start the program up, it's gonna look like this. You can start an R Markdown file just going to File, new file, oops, and uh, R Markdown, um, and just uh, do whatever here. Uh, so uh, you can basically write your document here. I'll go ahead and introduce you. Now I'll, I'll do the the actual writing in the the terminal because that's the way I do it. But um, you can knit it here. Uh, that prepares um, you know prepares it for install it or uh, actually compiles it so you can knit it to HTML or PDF. Um, but this is how you do. It's pretty simple in our in our studio. I just don't like having a really big program. I find it easier to just do it in a terminal window. So I'll show you how to do that. So I use Vim, um, and in order to do uh, to in order to compile R Markdown in the terminal, I have um, uh, made a little Vim shortcut so that whenever I'm in an R Markdown file, that it, it uh, I can automatically compile it to PDF or HTML or whatever. Uh, and that, I'll put a link to this in the description, but the line that I put in my file is right here, okay? Um, so this maps F5 to the following command. It just uh, literally runs a bash command. It echoes some stuff into R that tells it to run, um, you know, R, to actually render the file that we're in. That's all this is. So if you just copy this and put it in your vimrc, uh, whenever you type uh, uh, F5 when you're in an R Markdown file, it will uh, compile it. Um, so let's go ahead and actually get into how to actually write this language, which shouldn't take very long because it's a, you know it's a Markdown language. It's super simple. Um, so let's say uh, R Markdown dot RMD. RMD is the typical ending for R Markdown files. Um, so you can have a uh, a uh, What's the word? A preface? What's the word? It starts with a P. Prologue? Uh, whatever. The thing that's between hyphens, right? So you can have metadata up here. So I can say stuff like title, uh, my first R mark, mark down document, author, uh, Luke. Um, and one thing that you're probably going to want to set is output. So I want this to output to a PDF document, so I just say PDF underscore document. 
Um, now I should say none of this is actually necessary. You don't need to do any of this. It's just I want this specifically as a PDF and I'll put title and author just for, uh, you know, sake of example. Uh, but to actually compile a file, it's not like LaTeX where you have to have, you know, uh, some code in there by default just so LaTeX knows what to do. You don't need any of this in R Markdown. Um, so anyway, to actually write R Markdown, it's pretty intuitive. Uh, you just type. And that's how you make, uh, you know, your, your typical paragraphs and stuff like that. To make a line break, you need two returns. So, you know, these two sequences are going to be two different paragraphs, but uh, this is not going to be a different sequence. Um, so bullet point lists are with star. So you can make a list of different things. Uh, or you can make a numbered list with, you know, numbers and stuff like that. Um, but uh, so section headings are with um, uh, pound signs, hashtags, whatever you call it. So this is section heading. Uh, or we can make a subsection, subsection, uh, with two of them, or a sub subsection. So sub subsection. Um, so you have italics in. To make italics, you just put uh, whatever you want in in between two asterisks, asterisks, in between two stars. I always there's so many times in my videos I messed up that word, but who cares? It's it should be renamed. Uh, so italics, uh, you can have bold between uh, uh, two stars, stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and F5 and uh, compile this. Um, so I, I might have said it before, but by default. Our markdown will compile to an HTML, but since we've specified a PDF document, it's going to be uh, compiling to a PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and open this document here. So we have our section heading. All of it's nicely formatted. It's very reminiscent of uh, the output of LaTeX or something like that. Um, now, speaking of LaTeX, you can put arbitrary bits of LaTeX code uh, wherever you want in this document. So I can put uh, a table of contents. So some LaTeX commands will not work on every kind of document. So I think if you compile this into an HTML file, uh, table of contents won't work, but it does work fine for PDFs. That's when you really need it. Um, so you can do stuff like that. You can put pretty much arbitrary ticks things. You can put uh, pretty much anything you can do in LaTeX you can do uh, in R Markdown. So the the one of the main reasons I started using R Markdown is to be able to uh, have code snippets and have them run automatically. Uh, so you just have three uh, grave accents. What are those things called? I don't know. Um, if you have three of those uh, in between them, uh, you can put snippets of code. So right here, I've designated this code as being R. So I can write just any anything in R. So let's say I have like 56 uh, raised to the 19th. Uh, actually, let's put that in uh, quotation marks and we'll multiply that by five or something like that. So that's uh, valid R code. If I recompile that, uh, it's not just going to compile what I wrote, it's actually going to run the commands in R. And it outputs a nice little answer here. Uh, so this is how you do it for specifically R code. You can also use other stuff. So um, let's say you have some Python code that you want to uh, 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 throw in here or something. So I can just say uh, Python. Uh, and we'll say something like, what are we going to say? Uh, um, so x or z equals, you know, is a list with some numbers in it uh, for y and z uh, print y times 5, something really simple. Um, so if you want to run Python, uh, let's see if that actually works. I, gotta, I think uh, you need an extra package for it. I think I, yeah, I have it installed. So the package you want, if you want to install, uh, run Python code, for example, um, you have to install it in R itself. Uh, all you have to do is, excuse me, install, actually I wrote it down, reticulate. Install package is reticulate. And just install that. I already got it, but that's just so you know. Um, so R Markdown, again, has sort of the perks of LaTeX. You also have this code that you can run inside of it. Um, now, the other thing, again, as I mentioned before, I can output this just as well to HTML. Uh, so if I just delete this, by default, R renders to HTML. So I can now actually open my file here. So and you will see that I have a very nice formatted when it comes up. There it is. Okay, so here is a R Markdown document. Uh, actually, the default CSS is pretty decent. This is a very readable website. 
Um, so uh, you can just as easily have uh, HTML files or PDF files or whatever you want. Um, so the last thing, so we talked about the LaTeX code, we talked about actually running things, how you do it, we talked about the packages to install. Um, the last thing I think is pretty important is actually citations. Um, so if you're actually going to end up writing a bunch of stuff in our markdown, it's nice to be able to actually cite stuff you know you need for uh, whatever. Um, so I'm assuming if you're familiar with LaTeX, you know how to make a bibliography file. I have videos on it. Uh, you can check them out, but uh, you could look at it, look them up yourself. But if you want to uh, put in citations, actually, let me go back to having a PDF. Um, if you want to have citations, you first off have to tell it what bibliography file to use. So I'm going to say bibliography file, uh, which is in home, Luke, uh, documents, uh, LaTeX, uh, Unibib. Okay. So in order to actually cite things, this syntax is actually super simple. So I can say, um, uh, I can do, let's see, Chomsky uh, 2000. Just run that by, and Chomsky 2000, of course, is whatever you happen to label your stuff as. And if you have Pandoc cite proc in there, you'll notice that it does successfully compile. So here it actually lists out uh, whatever the, in, the citation is, and it will actually put the information here at the bottom. Actually, it'd be nice if we had a little uh, thing down here that says uh, like references or something. References. I'm doing it as if this is a serious document. Um, so you can also do this in different ways. So if you want a, a parenthetical citation, you can put it in uh, the brackets or whatever. Uh, you can also do something, let's say you refer to the author in text. So I say something like, um, you know, my boy gnome. Um, I can still say, oops, um, if I put a negative sign in front of this, it's actually what it actually is going to do is actually I'm put it in brackets because that would make sense. It's going to omit the author's name. So that's if you refer to the author in text or if it's obvious uh, in the context or something like that. Um, Give it a second. Okay, there we go. So now we have, yep, so we have normal citation, parenthetical citation, and citation without the author name. And of course, we have it all down here. Um, so anyway, th that's really the basics. Um, I did a bunch of videos on LaTeX, but if you know LaTeX, uh, this is pretty much all you need to get into R Markdown. Um, I said in the last video, I think I'm going to start using R Markdown as a main, a daily driver as they call it. I don't know why they call it that. I think it's for people who have multiple cars or something. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of Linux people say daily driver, but whatever. Um, so anyway, that, that's all the basics of R Markdown. Uh, just throwing it out there. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing a series on R. Stick around for it. Uh, and I'll be putting up more videos on different stuff. Anyway, so do you guys next time.